It was a night of debuts as Barcelona take all three points at Al Sadar against Osasuna last night. In this video, we'll be looking at the tactics and also see what did the new guys do on their debuts. But before we get into all of that, please do subscribe to the channel as that will be helping us to grow this family. And I also want to thank you guys for 1000 subscribers. It's been a great journey for me. Thank you very much. Let's continue growing the family. Let's get right into it. In the build-up phase, when Osasuna looked to build up from the back by splitting their centre-backs on either side of the goalkeeper, we did see that it was Gavi that joined Robert Lewandowski up top to put pressure on their centre-backs. And when Munoz looked to drop on the edge of the box to get on the ball, it was Gundogan who went forward to pin him down. To aid this press, Barcelona had an extremely high line in order to get this team to play in their own half, where we also saw that Robert Lewandowski was pressing from a tight angle where Gavi would actually go on to the other centre-back if Robert would press. So this was to actually get them to go through one side and they had a lot of success through Barcelona's right side because Gavi wasn't there. So this right side of Barcelona had no defensive cover and Xavi had to find new alternatives to make this work. So Gavi had to come back into his left wing position and Gundogan joined Lewandowski up top as a front two in a 4-4-2. However, with this 4-4-2, Osasuna would find a lot of players in between the lines and there was nobody sitting on Munoz, basically. So Xavi had to change because Barca was outnumbered in the midfield, technically. Therefore, we did see Gundogan come back into this position where he would sit on Munoz, where Robert Lewandowski moved forward between the centre-backs. This was to even out numbers not only horizontally, vertically, but also in the centre. So Barcelona was able to cover Osasuna much better this way. Barcelona had the usual shape of Tostegan splitting the centre-backs very wide, allowing the full-backs to go forward. We did see that Frenkie de Jong and Oromo as always had like a double pivot, but we did see Barca form their box extremely early in this game. But Osasuna defended extremely narrow in order to nullify Barcelona's box midfield. This was extremely smart from them as Barcelona was now outnumbered within the midfield and Barca had to find new ways to get upfield because there was very limited options, especially in midfield. But Xavi answered by diverting the shape of the team into a 2-3-5 formation to make the players receive the ball in between the lines. This made ball circulation extremely easy for Barcelona, forcing Osasuna deeper and deeper into their own half. But this has been a common theme for Barcelona throughout the season, where we are extremely good in the build-up phase, but we are really trash when it comes into the final third. This has a lot of different reasons for it. But Barcelona was able to circulate the ball extremely easy from one side to another throughout the midfield as well. We are now starting to see a lot more movement of the free eights, especially Gundogan, moving in between the lines creating a lot of problems for Osasuna in this game. It was also very encouraging for us to see the movement uh, of our free eights and Roberto and Frankie de Jong as well. And it was really good to pull players out of position because ultimately that is what you want, right? But also we did see that Oriol Mayer was pinned down by Jose and Xavi had him dropping even as deep as next to Kunde in the back three in order for him to get on the ball. That is actually kind of confusing for me because why do you then want to overload the midfield and then these guys have to drop either way. So Xavi needs to really get these guys to get forward. Frankie even dropped into the position over there. Why do you want to overload the midfield? So now Barcelona technically still has three players in centrally. Like you see in this picture over here, you can see Oriol Romeo like part of a back three. 
But I would have wanted Sergio Roberto to be inverting into the midfield because technically he's a midfielder. You see that everywhere where the guys are pinned down in the midfield, Frankie de Jong is alone there. Do you see an overloaded midfield now? So I don't think it's necessary for Xavi to be going through all of this by overloading the midfield, game in and game out. Even look at Frankie. How many midfielders does Barcelona have now? We only have two midfielders. So what's the whole point of all of this, Xavi? We also saw that in this game, Barcelona attacked more through the left side than we did in the previous game where we attacked to the right side. But this is just because of Joao Felix now and Alejandro Balde as well. As we look at the average positions as well, we saw that Barcelona had a lot more central midfield. Uh, look at where's Gavi and Gundogan. And of course, Frankie de Jong and uh, Oreo Romeo. But Lamine Yamal was again the widest player we had. Balde was more average again. It's really impressive for me to see how Gavi is operating at the moment. He's on guard mode in terms of pressing. No wonder Xavi wants to have him in his team constantly. This is just a majestic player to have, especially in defensive phase. But let me know down in the comment section what do you guys think about Barcelona's performance. How did we do it in terms of your opinion? Do let me know your comments. Do also subscribe and uh, let me know, like I said. Once again, I want to thank everybody who has been subscribing to the channel, uh, who has been leaving comments, liking the videos. Uh, it's really been a great journey with you guys and I hope to have great more moments with you. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you for, for supporting. Uh, goodbye.